Okay, so what factors affect the resistance of wire? I suspect one of the factors will be its length. Okay, so let's say this one has a length L, and let's say I've got another conductor here with twice the length. Which of these will have the highest resistance? Of course, it's going to be the one on the right, because it's the current will have to travel twice the distance. Okay, so it's actually going to have twice the resistance. So we can say that the resistance is directly proportional to the length. Okay, another factor that's going to affect the resistance is going to be the cross-section area through which the current flows through. In this case, it's a circle. Let's compare it to the wire on the right here. This wire on the right clearly has a larger cross-section area. Now, if it has a larger cross-section area, that means there's more space for the current to flow through. Now, if there's more space for the current to flow through, it means that the resistance is going to be lower. So we can say that the resistance is inversely proportional to cross-section area. However, we can't measure the cross-section area directly. We normally have to measure the diameter. So let's say the Y on the left has a diameter D and the Y on the right has a diameter of 2D. Okay, so how is this going to affect the cross-section area? Let's say the one on the left has a cross-section area of A. And it turns out the y, one on the right is going to have four times the cross-section area. It's not going to be double, it's actually four times. Why is that? Well, because area, in this case the circle, is going to be pi r squared. Now, because we have diameter, that's the same as saying pi, diameter divided by 2, which is the same as radius squared. If I expand that, that becomes pi diameter squared over 4. Now, these constants, the 4 and the pi, we can ignore that. Okay, the reason is because they appear in the equation for the conductor on the left and the conductor on the right. So they're constants, we, we can ignore those. So cross-section area is actually proportional to diameter squared. In, in fact, it's proportional to the radius squared as well. It doesn't actually matter if you use radius or diameter in this uh, problem. So because it's time, uh, squared, if we double the diameter, it gets squared, actually becomes times 4. So it turns out the area gets times 4. So we can say that the resistance is actually proportional to 1 over the radius squared, or which is the same as saying 1 over the diameter squared. Okay, the final thing that's going to affect our resistance is going to be the material the wire is made out of. To figure out how resistive a particular material is, we use a quantity called resistivity. Okay, so you can see a bunch of materials here and their resistivities. The conductors here are very good at conducting, so they have a very low resistivity, while the semiconductors are in between, and finally the insulators are very bad at conducting, so they have very high resistivity. Okay, we can say that the resistance is going to be directly proportional to the resistivity, and that's where the material comes in. Okay, putting all of this together, we get an equation for resistance. Resistance is going to be measured in ohms. Length in meters. Area or cross-section area in meters squared. This Greek letter here, rho, that represents the resistivity of the material. What is the unit for the resistivity of the material? Well, we can figure that out by making resistivity the subject of the equation. So Ra times or we'll divide by L is going to equal the resistivity. And on the right hand side, I'm going to write in terms of units. So ohm is for resistance, meter squared for area, divided by meters, which is the length. Okay, so one of the meter squared, uh, meters on the top is going to get cancelled out by the meter at the bottom. So the unit for resistivity is going to be ohm meters. A coil is made by swirling 200 meters length of insulated copper wire into a reel. The diameter of the copper wire is 0.52 millimeters. Calculate the current through the wire when a potential difference of 230 volts is applied across it. The resistivity of the copper wire is 1.68 times into minus 7 ohm meters. So we've got the length here, we've got the diameter here, and we've got the voltage here, we've got the resistivity here, and we're trying to find the current. Okay. So what we need to do here is figure out the resistance first. So resistance is going to equal resistivity times length over area. Okay, so first I'm going to work out the area separately. Okay, so I'm going to do area is equal to, in this case, I know it's going to be a circle because they use the word diameter. So that means it's going to be a circle. So I'm going to use pi um, and then I'm going to do the diameter 0.52 and divide that by 2, and don't forget, because it's a millimeter, and it times that by 10 to the minus 3 to 10 into meters, and then I'm going to do the whole uh, diameter there, or radius actually, because I divide by 2, squared. 
And if I multiply that and I calculate that, I get 2.1237 times 10 to the power minus 7 meters squared now, because I've already converted it. Okay, now putting that back into the equation for resistance, I get R is equal to resistivity, which is 1.68 times 10 to the power minus 7, times the length, which is 200 meters, divided by the area that we just worked out, 2.1237 times 10 to the power minus 7. That gives me a resistance of 158.2 ohms. Now we've got the voltage and we want to figure out the current, so we can just use Ohm's law. So we can just do V divided by R to get our I. So V is 230. And we just figured out the resistance, which is 158.2. And if we do that, we get 1.45 amps flowing through this conductor.